on a sad note with Jalen, do we have confirmation that the Achilles was torn? And then with Tehran, hoping it's not as serious as Isaiah Wynn's squad, any sense whether Tehran is serious or more of a day-to-day thing? Um, so the, uh, so the Achilles is torn for sure. Um, and, uh, the, the long road to recovery starts for Jalen, um, now and, um, Tehran's isn't as serious as, um, Isaiah's it's, uh, it's, um, game to game week to week. Is that something? Sure. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, no problem. David. Hey, Mike, uh, obviously, first, can you just take us through uh, the emotions right now for the team? And can you just describe what Jalen Phillips uh, means to this team as a player and as a person? No, so the emotions are um, – that, that's one of the things that is making our uh, our team, I think, uh, on each g- game day, one thing that you can say, you take all the critiquing out, out, out of it. Um, we have a very – hardworking, um, straining uh, team that plays for each other. And I think that is um, a a consequence of people really sharing each other's journey. So everybody knows what was on um, Jalen Phillips' mind. He he, He felt like he was ready and able and had put on all the work to make a big step in his game. And he's a big part of the team, but um, you know, the, the, the fortunate thing that the team has is they do have a lot of, you don't necessarily re- replace Jalen Phillips, um, but you can have guys that are fully capable to um, step up and kind of, um, you know, uh, get his production um, through different ways. So we, we are fortunate to have some depth and, you know, kind of the all, I, I think our players understand that the only way that we can kind of do right um by by Jalen Phillips and you know it's uh the lesser of evils is the worst case scenario is him for him to be going through his rehab and watching us um not fully take advantage of our opportunity so there's an element of people playing for him I think um and you know it's it it, it's very you know we're all very um aware of the this is something very commonplace in the National Football League in terms of um, you, you don't generally go through a season without losing um, a player or two that is, uh, you know, one, one of your core players. So um, it, it's something that uh, is a part of the journey, and it's really unfortunate for Jalen. However, um, there's no doubt in my mind that he's fully capable, and I know his mindset will be that – you know, as weird as it sounds now, you've got to you've got to figure out a way that it can be the best thing that ever happened to you, and that's the challenge. Um, that you know, we all something kind of really turns your world upside down. It's tough to kind of get there, but eventually you do, and um, you find different ways to make it something that that has helped you, that will be a defining. Care, um, defining moment in a good way. So the the challenge is long, but he has all his teammates, all the support. Um, you know, he's a, uh, and and uh, we all know that he'll he'll come back with vengeance when his time comes. But it's got a long journey for sure. To follow up came- on a point you made there, that you don't just replace a guy like Jalen Phillips. Would the plan now be some Andrew Van Ginkle and then a little bit more work for Ogba? Yeah, you know, I think that's the starting point, and then you just um, let the the players shape um what that is exactly to a t but without a shadow of a doubt there's going to be those two individuals that will have to step up and um that will also open up opportunities uh you know that um you know that you know when when gink is not playing stack backer that means you know there's very capable and ready you know i think david long is um you know, we'll have to step up as well and 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 play a role that he's been he's been thirsting for anyway. So um, it, it, that's why it's kind of like a group of people. You don't necessarily replace it, but it doesn't. Um, it just gives different people opportunities, and and you kind of spread that out um, to to do your best to um, compensate for that for that production loss. 
Adam Beasley. Uh, hey, Mike, I wanted to ask you about Tyreek. It's two weeks in a row now. That he looks like he's got dinged up a little bit, the hand and I guess the ankle yesterday, even though we played through it. Uh, what's your thinking on him as far as usage? I know he's got the most targets in the league. Do you weigh one against the other, you know, mid-season game, maybe, you know, watch the snap count, or is he just – Well, um, the field? I will say targets are not the same as playtime percentage. And if we uh, if we deep dive into playtime percentage, um, I think he's uh, there's probably fifteen to twenty receivers that play more than he does, um, which is strategic. We want him to be at his at his best, but um, no, I, I I don't think uh, I don't think that enters into the equation relative to um, yeah he, he's he's a football player that wants the ball, um, and I'm not going to be like. Hey man, you might get hit. Yeah, that's kind of. Um, but he he's both both the scenarios were kind of um, you know unfortunate too. It wasn't uh, he 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 has an incredible history um, of being able to stay healthy and play in games. I I can't remember the somebody could Google stat up real quick, but it's like crazy amount of he's only missed like two games or something. I don't even know. Um, so he is he is a guy that knows how to protect himself on the field. Um, it was a, a kind of a, a – you guys saw probably on the TV replay how it got rolled up early, um, which was just unfortunate. Uh, but he he's at a really, really good juncture in his career. I can't – I think his teammates have expressed it. I think you guys can kind of tell by his energy. He's, a, he's at another level of um, professional um, – Ality, professionality. I don't know, um, but he's uh, he he's going to make sure that if there's a will, there's a way. I'm very confident he'll take care of himself. And we have a good working relationship, um, such a trusting relationship with the players and and Kyle, where we're not going to press things too early. But um, yeah, no, I'm not going to. I know. You know what? Do you have? Um, do, do you represent several different fantasy defensive teams? I know I don't together. I, okay? I, and I, you're speaking on behalf of your fantasy defensive teams. And yes, that, that'd be a, a great idea. But outside of that, I think um, you know, he'll he'll always be involved and uh we'll just uh um we we do manage his playtime percentage though for I for think that. I think I'm the one sports writer in America who does not play fantasy, so that did not enter in the equation there. Do we believe him? <laughs> Go to Mark Stallworth. Hey, Coach, how's it going? Man, it's fantastic. Oh, you just got muted, bro. Are you all satisfied with the depth at the linebacker position? And have you and Chris discussed the possibilities of exploring free agency at that position as well? Yeah, we, we um, it's something we look at um, throughout the year, and you're kind of keeping abreast. And every time you have any sort of little little nick by any player kind of um assessing that we've had workouts um a couple weeks ago um i know and then as as far as uh anytime you get injured you go you you assess that whole that whole process and figure out how you're going to best serve your roster through uh through um you know whatever means necessary so whether it's on our team which we have a couple um couple of players that have opportunities to to get a, a little more exposure that I think they're ready for. Um, but also we'll we'll continue to do that. It's it's uh that's ever ever evolving. Basically every time someone does go down from that position group, um if there wasn't an immediate workout just before we worked people out just to kind of assess um the state of the union. And quick follow up. Uh, I know we, the game was on Friday, and typically you all play the Friday song on Friday. Were you all at all tempted to incorporate that at all, pre game, post game? No, it's kind of like a chill. Uh, you know, there's a I could have done post game, but I at that point I'd forgotten. You know, um, but pre game, that's like we're not making it to the game. You make it to Friday to get to the game. You're at the you're at the game. That's the 
I mean, it would have to be like a remix techno version. Maybe you can come up with it. Some house music, Friday song, then we'd be in business right, so for next nice. next Black Friday game. Thank you. Travis? Hey, Coach. Uh, that's a pretty physical football team. You guys were able to rush for mm-hmm. 167 yards against. Also, hey, Travis, do you not have AC? Yeah, I got a little AC. And a ceiling fan? Yeah, you circulate it. Okay, got it. Sorry, hey. continue. No, so physical team, 167 yards on the ground, also hit a couple of verticals against press coverage. I was curious how impressed you were by your team's ability not to just match that physicality, but also kind of dictate the terms in that game with a 15-play drive to close things out there late. No, it, it was a um, – to a degree, not – you know, there's always things as coaches that, you know, the point of coaching is to improve players, so there are always stuff to improve upon. And if your locker room is correct – um no one's trying to no one's even trying to play the perfect game they're expecting to play and then get better from it as we progress but that being said uh it was kind of a perfect scenario for the the parallel between what i was hoping the team was and what they showed me they were a short week is physically physically demanding okay um there's a lot of different distractions with regard to um holiday season and having um, a nationally televised game, um, we go to New York, and uh, you know, you just you want to make sure that guys are worried about um, none other, nothing but themselves, and how we play as a team. And to there, there's only one way um, that you can beat that football team is what you're saying is you have to be you have to mat you have to match and or exceed their physicality. And um, and I thought that was on a short week that that is very very encouraging for us to see. Um, and I also saw, uh, you know, continued. You can feel in the momentum of the game. I think there's something uh, you you can't totally quantify it, but there is an element on every really good team I've been on where people people play as a team, the different phases do. So I keep talking about that. And every time it shows up, I can just viscerally, I can feel it yesterday where somebody would make a play on the other phase off of a play made, or when someone was down, um, someone countered and, and, and swung the momentum back. So, you know, the, the greatest example we could ever have is the um, unbelievable play about Javon and, not only the play that Javon made, but um, the pass rush that um, that had to move the quarterback in the pocket, um, which got the receivers down on the field further, which made their them as tacklers worse. And then the effort with the the plays made by the defensive, uh, like Christian Wilkins and Bradley Chubb blocking at the point of attack. Um, it was like everybody recognized that this was a moment or our on the defensive side of the ball with no time left to rectify a couple of things that happened offensively, those type of things are monumental. And that's, that's um, what I saw physicality on all three phases and then uh, continued team development, which is the most important thing in my opinion. David Lang, WPLG. Coach earlier this season, it seemed like Jalen Ramsey sort of created a blueprint for a player who is injured, keeping themselves mentally engaged with the team, helping their teammates. And I'm curious if there are lessons to be learned there that could help Jalen Phillips as he's dealing with this injury. He was pretty open with some of the confidence issues he had and just how challenging it was for him to be hurt. So I'm just wondering if there were maybe some lessons to be no, learned. There, there. There, there's some definite lessons. I think it's a different application considering um, J, uh, Jalen Ramsey was at the beginning of the season working to the middle. However, um, that, that what Jalen Ramsey did, you're exactly right. That will, that will forever um, uh, live in, in, in my memory. Bank. I guarantee it has residuals. And I think there will be, there's probably in that regard. Now it's a different, it's a different exercise to be um, on the back end of the season. Uh, and, you know, the, the biggest thing will be about 
what maximizes Jalen Philly's ability to recover at, at, in his best self. I'm sure there's going to be for him. He's it's, he's really going to want to be um, around the guys, just knowing him. Um, but you know, there's also um, you know, you also you you want to build perspective, but you don't want to make yourself completely miserable because it is tough to just sit there and have that taken away from you. So there's a balancing act that, you know, it's probably early in the process for us to kind of say exactly what that looks like, but um, without, I, I know every player on this team um, going through injury, especially ones that have extended time frame have been absolutely impacted by what Jalen did and the blueprint um, in that regard is real. One other question. Uh, a couple of your, a couple of your players commented on the turf at MetLife. And I was just curious if you had any thoughts or you would care to comment at all about the turf there at MetLife. I mean, yeah, like whatever I say is going to be bold print. I don't like injuries. I would, I would encourage that to follow the science, whatever that is, because I'm not reading books. Uh, on it and I'm not studying it. That's not my role. Um, we, I, I think everybody's incentivized for the, the, the safest situation possible. And, um, you know, I, I, for me, if I did know with factual evidence through study that, um, that any sort of injury was a hundred percent, um, was avoidable on a different playing surface that would make me lose my mind. I would flip over tables and I'd probably, but like, I don't have that, but if that's there, it's, it, you know, it's super important because, um, uh, you know, our game is a vessel of the best players performing. So if we're not doing everything we can to ensure that they have the ability to play, then we're being counterproductive and should just, um, take a lesson from mice and run on a mouse wheel or hamster, hamster. Yeah. Let's run hamster, hamster laps. That'd be, a, so, um, I don't know. I, I, I just hope everyone does their due diligence and, um, you know, you kind of in, in my profession where, where I said, I just have to, I have to believe that's going to, be, that's being done and have been done and going to be done, but it would be ignorant of me meaning lack of knowledge. If I just said, yep, it was the surface. I don't know that. I hope it wasn't for sure. Steve Gordon, Palm Beach Post. Hey, Mike, how are you? Um, good. I want, good. I, following up did, on- Did on you Jaylen. draw that? Did you draw that? No, my son, did. My, my son did when he was about oh. seven. Yeah. Oh. I just thought it'd be really cool uh, if you made a drawing and put it behind you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was wondering it. Did uh did Jalen end up uh staying back in New York? And I was I was curious if he might consult um Aaron Rodgers as a uh, specialist about um a speedy Achilles surgery to help him maybe you know come back sooner. Um, yeah, hopefully they're on the uh, McAfee show this week talking Achilles. Uh, <laughs> uh, I you know I do know there was some information distributed through. It, it was like in the periphery because there's a lot of stuff going on, but I know, um, you know, I, I've, I've heard, I don't know him personally, but I've heard great things about Aaron Rodgers and the, and the type of human being he is. And I think he was working um, some channels uh, to get in touch with, with Jalen um, as of last night through um, a couple of people that, that have some relationships with him. Um, and, you know, I think, uh, you know, he, he's a smart guy that's uh that's not afraid to um you know chase the chase the most exotic science and um there's i think that's kind of um something that you know specifically jalen phillips he's not one of those uh old school i've always done it this way type of guys he would be open to whatever so that's um yeah, I, I think player relationships, it's important for the actual tangible rehabilitation, but it's also important to talk to guys that have been through similar situations um, from a, uh, from a, just a, a, a men, your, your performance athlete that needs to maintain their, um, 
mental stability and and really health um, with regard to being a professional athlete that can't be an athlete at the time. So I think all of those things are um, very important. I know um, as of last night, there was um, some some uh, things developing, um, but I, I, I don't really know those tangibly yet. So and he traveled back with you guys or he stayed he did. back up? And he yeah. Didn't travel. And, and just a re- another quick question, just off topic. Um, on Austin Jackson's ejection, I was just curious what you, your thoughts were looking back at that. Well, um, I don't think it's – I hope – I don't think it's a correlation. Or, I think there's – it's not happenstance that's the first guy that's been kicked off uh, or, or been ejected since I've been head coach. That's something that from the first day that I start, um, I, I explicitly – articulate that that's not that stuff between whistles or out or stuff outside the whistles is just um you know a very it, it's a waste that ultimately even in the moment if you don't realize this um in hindsight you'll always recognize that it's kind of a selfish move um in regard to um you hurt the team and you hurt yourself so the one great thing about Austin Jackson, he's given me so much um, reason to trust and believe in his, he shows me every day how coachable he is. Um, I know he was, um, you know, uh, very much in the tank about doing anything negative to the team. He's, he's really committed his entire life to do the opposite. So um, I'm I'm very confident that that won't happen again, Um, but it's something that you can't, you know, it it can – no, it, people have to realize in the front end that their actions have consequences. And um, if you are getting 15-yard penalties or getting ejected, those consequences can be quite severe with regard to the team. Final question, Alan. Uh, hi, Mike. So I get the last question. So um, Hail Mary, so to speak. Now I'll go with, with a simpler one. I want to get your take. On Liam's performance at right guard while being up, I was I was sure you're going to go Al Mike Al Michaels on me. Um, what was uh, uh Liam? Yeah. yeah, he 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 continues to just um, you know, I really really like coaching the guy because he uh he just gets better at stuff within the system once he understands it, and right now. Um, it's, it, we're at a cool spot where that learning curve is super fast. So when he goes back, when he goes from center to right guard, um, you know, he's, he's getting better with every, with every rep. And I think he's, he played like a, um, how would you expect him to play like a starting NFL right guard that, um, is an asset and that can make plays. He made a couple of plays in the run game that were hu- humongous in terms of the outcome of the game. Um, couple, couple, uh, of the runs that that resulted in points had something directly to do with um, what he was doing on on the line of scrimmage, and I thought he he protected the quarterback well. So um, it was a encouraging step. I wouldn't say I was surprised, um, but you're always pumped when um, your your expectations matched by actual um, production.